Today we are going to talk about how to use our calculator to solve for inverse values and then also how to do more complex involved problems. So for these first two examples we're doing sine inverse and cosine inverse. Remember that arc cosine is the same as cosine inverse. Use your calculator and verify that you are in radian mode and degree mode and make sure that you get the two answers that are on the screen. Next we're going to talk about how to do a secant inverse, cosecant inverse, and cotangent inverse. Recall when we learned about this back in chapter 2 and 3 that if I don't have a TI-89 and I need to enter the secant inverse or any of these other reciprocal functions on the calculator, um, I need to use the inverse function of the reciprocal. So what I'm going to do for number 3, for example, is I would type this in using cosecant inverse of the reciprocal of this value that is given to me. Now if you try to type it in as it is listed, you'll get an error because remember the way that inverse functions work. What question 3 is saying is what angle has a secant ratio of negative 1.48? Well if I were to type in cosine inverse of negative 1.48 that wouldn't work because cosine is not allowed to have a ratio that is smaller than negative 1. So we have to remember to use the reciprocal function inverse of the reciprocal. All right go ahead and enter these two and verify that you get the correct answers off to the right. For number 4, we would enter this as sine inverse of 1 over this 2.97 number. Now we do have a special case, and the special case is for our um, cotangent inverse. The reason why we have a special case here is because, if you recall, the function tan inverse has a domain restriction for its angles. Um, so the answers that we get back from the calculator, the range, are from negative pi halves to pi halves. Cotangent inverse, on the other hand, the angle restrictions here that we have for the range are 0 to pi. So the problem happens that when you use the calculator to get a cotangent inverse and you have to enter it as a tangent inverse, the calculator is going to give you an answer in this angle region and you have to recognize how to modify that answer so that it's in 0 to pi. So basically, to kind of sum this up, if you need to use the tan inverse button to find a cotangent inverse, then you need to make sure that the final answer is an angle in the correct range. And by range, I'm referring to these two sets of numbers right here. So for number 5, when I type this in, I'm going to do tan inverse of 1 divided by negative 0.3541. And the calculator is going to give me the answer negative 1.231. Now this is a radian measure in quadrant 4. Okay, remember our cutoff value is that 90 degrees or pi halves was 1.57. So this value here is down in quadrant 4. However, it's a cotangent of a negative ratio. Therefore, it should be in quadrant 2. So to fix that problem, I need to add pi. And after adding pi, I get the correct answer of 1.911, which is in quadrant 2. Now when I do problem number 6, I don't have to worry about this. Because in problem 6, when I do tan inverse, I have 1 divided by 1.2156. This is a positive angle or a positive ratio, and both tangent inverse and cotangent inverse, when the ratio is positive, they return an angle that is in quadrant 1. So here, when I get the answer from the calculator, and again we want this one to be in degrees, I'm going to get 39.442, and that is my answer. I leave it be. In this case, I don't add 180. If you were to add 180, you would get an answer that's down in quadrant 3, which is also outside of the restrictions for cotangent. Okay, for this next set of problems, we are going to find the exact value for each problem. Now, when we do this, we are not going to be using a calculator. And for these problems, what I suggest that you do is find the x, y, r values. And then also you want to start on the inside and work your way out. So for this first problem, when I see arc cosine of 1 fourth, 
I'm doing a cosine inverse. Now when I do a cosine inverse, my answer is going to equal an angle. And then next, I want to find the sine of that angle, which will give me a ratio. I really don't care what the angle is, I just care what the sine ratio is at that angle. So what I'm going to do is find the x, y, r for the angle. I know that x is 1, I know r is 4. Pythagorean theorem, I get that y is square root 15. Because this is a positive ratio, I know with cosine, if it's a positive ratio, the answer is in quadrant 1. I know that my y value is positive. So now, when I go to get sine for this mystery angle theta, I just do y over r, which gives me root 15 over 4. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So for problem number 8, again, I want to do x, y, r. And this is a sine problem, so my y is negative 1, my r is 5. Now, sine has a negative ratio in quadrant 4, therefore my x is positive. So when I do Pythagorean theorem, 25 minus 1, I get square root 24, which reduces to give me 2 root 6. And now, I want to find the secant. So remember that sine inverse of a ratio gives me an angle. These are the x, y, r values for that angle. And now I want to find the secant of that angle, which is r over x, or 5 over 2 root 6. After rationalizing, I get 5 root 6 over 12. All right, now when we look at number 9, again, remember that this whole area right here, cosine inverse of 1 fourth, all of this reduces to give me an angle. So since that reduces to give me an angle, what I'm really doing is doing tangent of 2 theta. Yep, those formulas have not gone away. So for theta, let's get our x, y, r. I know my cosine ratio is 1 fourth, and we already found in the problem above it that y was going to be square root 15. So now let's use our cosine 2 theta formula or sorry, tangent 2 theta formula. So 2 tan theta divided by 1 minus tan squared theta. All right, so based on these values, my tangent ratio is root 15. So I have 2 times root 15 over 1 minus root 15 squared. So we're going to get 2 root 15 over negative 14 or negative root 15 over 7. Okay, now this last question, um, we need to be a little bit careful because um, a lot of times people see this cosecant and cosecant inverse and just assume that they cancel. Yes, they are inverses of each other. Yes, they do undo each other. However, we have to be careful to make sure that the ratio that is in the cosecant inverse is a valid problem. So in this case, if I were to do my x, y, r, I would get that my r is root 2 and my y is 1, therefore my x is 1. And then when I go to do cosecant of that angle, cosecant is r over y, so I just get root 2 again. An example of where this would not work, let's say this were a sine problem. And let's say I would have had or a cosine problem, we'll just make a cosine. Let's say I've given you the problem cosine of cosine inverse of root 2. I don't want you to just jump to the conclusion that those inverses can cancel because they won't. This is not equal to root 2. And the reason why it's not is because root 2 isn't even a valid ratio for cosine. It's not possible. So in this case, this would be no solution or undefined because cosecant of root 2 won't work in the first place. All right, here's our last two examples. So in these problems, we want to think about what we saw in the previous one. Each of these inverse ratios is related to an angle. Now, they're different angles. So we're going to call this one angle A and this one angle B. You see where I'm going with this? So this is cosine of A plus B. All right, so let's make our double XYR chart. So XYR for angle A and B. So for sine, we'll have 3, 5, and then 4. And for cosine, we'll have 5, 13, and then 12. 
Since both of those ratios are positive, we know that the angles are in quadrant one. And then from here, we just expand out our formula. Cosine A, cosine B, minus sine A, sine B, and then plug in our fractions. So 4 fifths and 5 thirteenths minus 3 fifths and 12 thirteenths. And we end up getting 20 minus 36, or negative 16 over 65. All right, I want you to try this last problem on your own. Um, this is one of those crazy intensive tangent problems. So the correct answer is 25 root 3 plus 48 over 39. Pause the video and try it on your own. These are the ones that people have the most trouble with algebraically. And then unpause it and I'll explain the work. All right, so first we have to get our double x, y, r chart. So if we fill that out over here, we'll call the first angle A and the second angle B. I have root 3, 2, and negative 3 and 5. So I have all my x, y, r values filled in. And now from here I need to do my tangent formula. So again, this is going to be um, tangent of A minus tangent of B divided by 1 minus, or 1 plus, tan A, tan B. And tangent of A is going to be 1 over root 3, which is root 3 over 3, and um, tangent of B is going to be root 3 over 4. All right, so these are the two values that I'm going to be putting in my problem. Okay, so I have root 3 over 3 minus a negative, 3 over 4, divided by 1 plus root 3 over 3 times negative 3 over 4. Now, I'm going to clear off all my fractions because I don't like dealing with the fractions. So in order to do that, I need to find the LCD of the problem. I have a fraction of 3, 4, and 12 denominators. So in this case, my LCD is 12. So I'm going to multiply everything by 12, including the 1. And that gives me 4 root 3 plus 9 divided by 12 minus 3 root 3. Now at this point, nothing can reduce yet, so I'm going to go ahead and um, rationalize by multiplying by 12 plus 3 root 3 over 12 plus 3 root 3. Okay, so after all of my foiling, I get this um, problem over here on the bottom left in red. So now I'm going to go ahead and combine my like terms. I have 48 and 27, which gives me 75 root 3. I have 36 and 108, which gives me 144. And then I'm dividing this by 144 minus 27, which gives me 117. Now at this problem, I'm probably looking at it like, ugh, does this reduce? And it does, it all divides by three. So since every single number can divide by three, remember the heart, all these numbers get reduced. So we have 25 root three plus 48, all over 39. All right, that's it for today.